Hello my soccer universe and welcome to a two week or three week <laughs> review of what was happening in Portugal and Spain. Why three weeks? Yeah, last week I didn't do a video and then I was sick before so we have actually quite some grounds to cover i just realized however uh the interesting part about this is that um there is not actually that much to cover yes there were tons of games but frankly both of these leagues are very much set in many ways and if it wasn't for uh the big bang yesterday that barcelona went to Real Madrid and completely destroyed them. Um, I don't think these leagues are all that exciting, unfortunately. And especially for um, La Liga, this is something that hurts to say a little bit because I was really happy that we may get a team outside of the two Madrid teams, Barcelona and Sevilla, in the Champions League next season. However, Betis is tailing off a little bit. Sevilla... For all the talent and what a nice squad they have, they continue to disappoint and are far off a title challenge. In fact, at the moment, I don't even am sure if they will even finish third. I think they're trending definitely towards the fourth spot. So, uh, so everything's done. The nice excitement that we had with Rayo Vallecano, gone. They are coming down. So... It's more or less about relegation in La Liga because all the other spots are in there. Ah, yeah, and then we have Villarreal, which is kind of the, uh, the surprise bag, good in the Champions League, but in the league, rather disappointing. So, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I should be hyped up in many ways, but no, I'm, I'm not. So I, I just want to justify a little bit why uh, I actually decided to skip this time uh, last week. And coming here and in Portugal also I mean yes if you look at mid table and relegation there's a lot of stuff happening but up top it is so much set in stone especially Benfica and Braga focusing on Europe and Portland Sporting already being out of Europe so um, and whatever Sporting does Porto does better so uh, just a couple of results will start in Portugal to point out um, we had at the beginning of uh, the month we are going really way back. Uh, just look look at the results in Portugal. Uh, Befica, Sporting and Porto all winning uh, in the week, uh, you know, 4th to 7th of March. Porto probably at Passos 4-2. Uh, this was the best win because Passos uh, yeah, is kind of mid-table. It was a 4-4-4 four, four, four to win. Then Benfica dropping actually points at home to Vizela, which is, again, that's why Benfica is here on the third third spot. Well, whereas Porto 4-0 over Tondela easily and uh, Sporting beating more range 2-0. Actually, I saw a little bit of that. I Actually, this was the first time I ever in my life saw more range and I was totally dumbfounded because from the crest it kind of looks like that they should be playing in green and white and then they show up in purple jerseys with green which didn't look bad it was just a complete surprise to me but they are probably going down after having acquired a good run in the league um and then this weekend i mean yeah everyone won every everyone won uh the big result of course the uh porto won the um derby against boavista at the uh, dobesa uh, Braga uh, beating Portimonense away from home, Benfica uh, at home to Estoril, probably the best win. And we, uh, and you know, in another kind of traditional duel, uh, Sporting 3 1 at Vitoria Guimarães. So, also uh, not a bad win uh, there. But overall, as I said, Portugal, it's all set as in stone. We have Porto with 73 points, Sporting 67, Benfica 61. Uh, at the moment, it's a 94% chance that Porto will win the championship and uh, Sporting's game is 6%. It is unfathomable that Benfica will go and win the title. But, you know, they may snatch the direct spot from Sporting, even though that seems unlikely with uh, Sporting having a 50% chance, you know, uh, making it into uh, the Champions League. Actually, it actually should, it should be much higher. Uh, if I think about it, I have to adjust my cal calculation. Uh, I think it's uh, it's looks rather comfortable. Let's put it that way. Over to Spain we go. Uh, and again, we have to start way, 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 way back at the beginning of the month. I think, I'm not sure if I talked about Real Sociedad beating Mallorca away from home. Uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was on the 2nd of uh, March. But then uh, the round before that, 
I think the the most exciting game in there, if I just look uh, look at it, it was probably Betis losing at home to Atletico Madrid because that actually set the um, size. Atletico Madrid is a team that is picking up steam, and for me, at that point, it seemed like yeah, this is the decider: will Betis or Atletico Madrid make make it make it to the Champions League? And it was a rather convincing performance uh, by Atletico Madrid, if I remember uh, well, with Joao Felic. Uh, scoring actually two goals, uh, Teo only could equal, but it was a highly ent- entertaining game where Atletico Madrid really showed that, yeah, this is a team getting on a roll. Uh, Barcelona beat Elche, was a whole lot of work. Uh, I think, um, who scored the penalty? I think it was uh, Memphis Delta, that they were one of the craziest penalties you ever see uh, putting up there. Elche had the lead at halftime. Uh, Barcelona did come, come back to get a deserved win, but it, uh, it looked a whole lot more work than it needed. And the Real Madrid also found themselves down to Real Sociedad and then turned on 4 for one So at that point, it really, you could already smell how good uh, those three teams seemingly are. Um, Sevilla dropping points at Alaves, which is a theme throughout. Sevilla is at the moment at a really, really rough spot. Then, uh, on the past weekend, Atletico Madrid having a lot more trouble with Cadiz than uh, one would uh, think, but one has to also say that Cadiz is battling relegation, uh, which they may or may not uh, escape. Uh, Down in the uh, league, uh, I'll talk about it in a bit, it's also kind of tightish and interesting. Uh, Villarreal get a rare win over Vigo. Um, you know, Betis beating them Bilbao, but it seems all a little bit uh, late coming. Uh, Sevilla again, only 1-1 one, one against Rayo. Rayo is kind of trying to stop the plunge that they're having at, at the moment. You know, at the beginning of the season, they were up there in fifth spot, but ever since the New Year, New Year started, it's uh, down, 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 down for Rayo. Um, and maybe they're leveling out now to a mid-table finish. Uh, I think they're fine with relegation as far as, 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 as I can tell. I actually had some fun watching Barca against Osasuna because, you know, at the moment, Barca is almost whenever they show up in La Liga, except for against Elche, they're almost guaranteed to score four goals. And they're becoming a more entertaining side to watch for sure although I'm still not quite sure um, overall whether uh, how sustainable this will be in the uh, next in, in into the next season I mean remember last year also around this time Barcelona seemed unbeatable and uh, hellbent on catching Atletico Madrid and just couldn't get it over the line in, in a way because every time they were about to take uh, the lead they managed to drop points and so in the end it was uh, between the Madrid teams. So uh, while at the moment Barcelona really, it looks like Barcelona again, uh, it is fun to watch and yes, the transfers, however shady they may have been, seem to work out really, 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 really well. And uh, I got a lot of Xavi for turning that squad a little bit, uh, uh, to first skirt, turning the squad around. Um, so all good there, and they are admittedly fun, fun to watch. And then Real Madrid beating 3 0 Mallorca, um, which then goes into this weekend, which was not a very goal filled weekend. Um, Espanol, no, what Espanol? Rayo losing at home to Atletico Madrid. Typically Atletico Madrid performance, but you know, hey, you're a quarter final in the Champions League, you, you ousted. Um, um, Manchester United. I actually saw a little bit of Celta against Betis, which was uh, rather boring, nil-nil. Yesterday, uh, in the early afternoon, I saw way too many nil-nils. Uh, for, fortunately, I w- it was then a little bit with lopsided games. I was a little bit, um, uh, how to say, no, the word is coming. But you know, uh, it was made up to me with then some goals uh, later on. Uh, I, on purpose, decided to not watch Elche against Valencia because I made the mistake of watching Valencia against Getafe and that was such a boring game that I actually turned off and it's hard for me to turn off games. Um, and I made the same decision. So yes, uh, uh, yesterday, I'm not going to in any way go near Sevilla against the Real Sociedad because both teams are not in a good form and the Real Sociedad from being one of the most entertaining games uh, turned into almost one of the most boring games. Their goal uh, is 29-29. They have one goal per game uh, scored and conceded. And they're in sixth place. This tells you a little bit about uh, how La Liga is going at this moment. 
So all about Real Madrid Barcelona and if you saw my rant video uh, I'm very happy to, to report that whenever a special jersey gets put out you get trashed. Absolutely trashed. And this is what happened to Barcelona last season when they had their special El Clasico kit which still should be somewhere in the dust bins where you can pick it up for 10 bucks and not uh, for more. Um, so <laughs> we all have, have the uh, image of the torrential rain and massive freezing. But um, Real Madrid now, I was so happy that their 180 uh, euro uh, social experiment of let's see how much we can fleece the fans turned over into a complete disaster that no one will ever want to remember this shirt. And it's kind of symptomatic because remember when Real Madrid uh, celebrated their 100th and, and anniversary, they had a cup final in the Bernabeu where Real Madrid was in there. I want to say it was against Bilbao, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. And they lost that one. They didn't win the league this season. They won the Champions League to make up for that. But overall, it was rather, rather poor centenary year for, for Real Madrid. Now, I still don't get why you have to make a black anniversary jersey when you have a perfect white one uh, lying around. You could do something with that. Be it as it may, I am very, very happy that, yes, there was no Benzema. Real Madrid did not show up. And as brilliant as Barcelona were, I think the biggest story has to be how bad Real Madrid were. The centre-back pairing of uh, Alaba and Eda Militao, non-existent. I mean, these were alibi attacks in, 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 in many ways. The midfield, the lauded Real Madrid midfield that uh, took PSG apart. No, PSG for 60 minutes took them apart, but then they lost the plot. This midfield did not gain any control. And it was all Barcelona and it was brilliant to watch and it was rather rather funny that I think it took Barcelona all of 20 minutes played to score those four goals and it should have been higher. Uh, Obama Young clearly missed the hat trick. Uh, it was one way traffic of the best of the uh, highest degree and I gotta say um, I do a little bit regret not having this yellow Barcelona jersey because I think it is rather rather nice. Um, I may, I hope it will pop up someone, uh, some, 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 some time for cheap. I have enough Barcelona jerseys, let's put it that way. <laughs> but yeah, the nicer jersey won yesterday. And um, since I always better talk about Barcelona as, as, as of late with Xavi's This is the way com comment, I kind of make a lot of Star Wars re re references. It came to me yesterday. Those black Real Madrid jerseys, even, even the white ones. Uh, there's a definite Star Wars component in there between El Clasico with Real Madrid being the Empire and Barcelona the Rebels and what happened yesterday is the Rebels Luke Skywalker blowing up the Death Star this is what happened yesterday now I've said it in my rant video I say it again on a sporting value this was the least important Clasico in years because we know Real Madrid are gonna uh, win the league Barcelona now probably will finish in second uh, or former though they are three behind Sevilla but with a game in hand so um, I think Barcelona will go second. Uh, it is kind of a confirmation that is a turnaround but this is all about bragging rights because what this result does I think Real Madrid could have lived with a loss to Barcelona because I think uh, most Madrid fans were even happy that Benzema was not playing because you know we have a Champions League to play. And the Champions League for Real Madrid is usually even more important than the league. But that humiliation, and this was a proper hum humiliation. I think the scoreline was sledding for Real Madrid. This was a Real Madrid side that did not show up in any shape or form. I think as much as Barcelona played well, I think it's, it is in this case, it's Real Madrid that were that bad. And so, uh, with having said all that... Uh, it gives brain rights to Barcelona and it also puts this little dent in there. Even if Real Madrid should win the league. You say, nah, but 4-0 at the Bernabeu. That league title doesn't count for much. So, you know, Barcelona has that. So a little bit bragging rights back. Barcelona fans all over, all over the world will be very happy. I've always said uh, between Real Madrid and Barcelona, I probably lean a little bit more Barcelona. Uh, but you know, I 
over the years I got very much disenfranchised with Barcelona. Maybe there is something that's coming back uh, a little bit, but uh, let's see. In any case, it was the outstanding result over the past three weeks and everything has been building up to that one. And for that reason, I think um, it was actually worth it to only do one video in three weeks uh, for La Liga. But it ended in a proper humiliation and with a proper bang. And yeah, I, it will be interesting how things uh, develop from here. I think the international break cannot come soon enough for Real Madrid. Uh, to regroup and you know get some other thoughts uh, together for most of their players it's anyway since they already qualified for the world cup it's anyway uh, easy going so uh, we gotta see there but boy 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 and i still i mean i still cannot get over the fact that chess all oh, oh, but my young missed i mean he should have had a hat trick there and um also that dembele suddenly is playing well for barca I still would not necessarily extend this contract, but hey, we gotta see. Any case, I would like to know what you thought about the hap happenings in, in, in these two leagues. As, as I said, if it wasn't for that result, I still wouldn't very be very much co-convinced to talk much about this league. We're so, so, uh, so decided. Yeah, I should talk about re re relegation where potentially Granada might get pulled in, into it. At the moment, it is um, rather tight on the bottom. We have Alaves and Levante are probably gone with 19 and 22 points. But Mallorca have now 26. They are moved now towards the bottom. We have Cadiz with 27. And we have Granada with 28. And Getafe with 29. Also doesn't seem safe fish. But I think they have enough quality in their squad in there. So um, it could be between Mallorca, Cadiz and Granada. With at the moment Mallorca maybe, maybe the one that might go down. But... Uh, there's still enough games to play. We have 76% of the season are played, so three quarters. It would be nice now if I had the option to put out the graphs that I did uh, kind of at the halfway point. But, you know, until I get my new com com computer, I won't be able to do it. In any case, please let me know what you thought about uh, what was ha happening these two leagues. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!